Hey everyone and welcome to Chet Chats Masterclass once again. I know you're sitting and thinking about applying to colleges abroad and you're overwhelmed by the idea of those multitude of essays and you're thinking, hey, how do I get cracking on them and how do I make them perfect? So today's masterclass is about how to write that perfect statement of purpose. We'll call it SOP for this class. But before we begin the class, don't forget to press that subscribe button and the bell icon right next to the subscribe button so you get a notification every time we go online. And like us at Facebook at ChatChat101, at Twitter at ChatChat101 and at Instagram at ChatChat101. So like I said, there's a multitude of essays, but there are two types of essays that appear more often than the others. One is your personal statement and the other is called a statement of purpose. And before we talk about the statement of purpose in detail, which is really what this class is about, I'm going to tell you what the personal statement is and how the two of them are different. A personal statement is a story about your personal experiences, your work, your volunteer experiences and everything in the past that has made you the person that you are today and led you to arrive at this juncture where you're motivated to apply to college. Now, a personal statement is typically used by the admissions office to figure out whether you fit into their student community or their student body. A statement of purpose or an SOP on the other hand is a bridge between your past experience and the future that you want to build at this program, specifically at this university. The SOP is used by the admissions counsellors to decide whether you're a right fit for that program. Now generally, undergraduate programs ask you for a personal statement and graduate schools ask you to submit a statement of purpose, sometimes additionally a personal statement and a resume as well. So before you begin writing that perfect statement of purpose, it would be worthwhile if you list down all your credentials, your experience, your award certificates and everything down on a sheet of paper and divide that into three main categories. The first is what information do you think your CV or your resume should contain? And mind you, typically a resume is a one pager. The second category of information is what is that information that you think should appear on your statement of purpose and the third is what are those interesting stories about your life that you want to save for your personal statement. And now that you've put everything on paper and you've divided it into three main categories, let's begin this masterclass by talking about how to write that perfect statement of purpose. Now, for the sake of this class, I've divided this information into six P's because I thought that will make it easy for you to remember and relate to as well. The first P is called purpose. Now, in the SOP, you need to make a clear articulation of your goals and interests. That includes, now I'm going to give you a number of questions that you want to think about under this big P of purpose. The first question is, why do you want to do graduate study in the first place? Why do you want to pursue this particular degree? Now, if you're doing a research-based program, is there any particular research interest that you have that you want to fulfill through this degree? If you're undertaking, on the other hand, a professional program, what are the skills and knowledge that you hope to gain through this program? Some other questions under this overall category of purpose that you want to answer is, what do you want to do after you complete this program? For example, do you want to take up a job? Do you want to set up a startup? Or do you want to get into research and academia? These are some of the questions I want you to think about while addressing the first P, which is a really important P, of the purpose itself of applying for this program. The second P is called past experience. And the few questions that I want you to think about under this category of past experience is what and what kind and how much of past experience do you already have? And if you already have that work experience, then what skills do you hope to gain from this program? And how does that experience relate to this program? Now, when you're talking about your past experience, it's important to share vivid, 
concrete examples of the work that you've done. For example, you may have written a paper, perhaps that paper got published somewhere, perhaps you did a project that relates directly to the work that you want to do at this college, maybe you made a presentation, you worked with a mentor and all of that relates directly to the program. Give them those specific examples because then it makes them believe that you're ready for graduate school. The third P is what I call program. And this is actually the crux of the SOP. Really very important because like I said, the SOP is a connect between your past experience and the future that you want to build with this program at this college. Now under the heading of program, here are a few questions that I'd like you to think about while you're addressing this aspect. The first is, if you're applying to a country other than the US particularly, for example, if you're applying to Canada, Australia, Germany, you must answer the question, why do you want to study in that country? If you're applying to the US, you could skip that question. The second aspect here is, why do you want to study at that particular college? And this is where you need to be careful about using the right vocabulary. You must remember to use the right words to show that you've done research on the college and you're really interested in going and joining them. Coming to the program, some of the questions you need to think about is how does your work connect with the program and how does the program fulfill your needs and interests? What are your expectations from the program and how are you going to contribute to the program? Does the department have a particular research methodology that you, that you like? Or does it have a certain facet of the curriculum that appeals to you? Or is there any particular professor that, for instance, that you'd like to work with? Now, this is very interesting. Mm -hmm. If you do find that there is a professor out there in the department that has done work, which is typically along the lines of the kind of work that you want to do, then it makes a lot of sense for you to refer to that professor in your statement of purpose. You could even go as far as trying to contact the professor before you write the statement of purpose and asking them to endorse your SOP when it goes right in. But having done all this research shows them that you're genuinely interested in the program and you're ready to work hard to get into this one. The fourth P is called personality. Apart from your work and education, what is it about you that makes you unique? What is that one or two things about your personality that you want to showcase to the admissions officer? What do you know about the student body and how do you think you're going to fit in is also an aspect of connecting your personality to the personality of the college. The key to writing a good SOP is being unique and standing out in the minds of the admissions counsellor long after he's put away your statement and finished reading it. Instead of writing the obvious, I am honoured to join this program and I want to gain certain skills and knowledge, how about you start your personal statement with a quote, an anecdote or some experience from your personal life that connects directly with the program that you're wanting to pursue. The fifth P is what I call plain English. You need to communicate clearly, effectively and logically. I know there is a tendency sometimes to rush into those big words, to right click and look up the thesaurus and see, is there this really fancy word that I can plug right into my SOP to make it sound exotic? But my advice, don't do that. Make it simple, effective, write appropriate words, but make it very, very easy to read. There's also sometimes a tendency I find that students have is to get somebody else to write their SOP. Now, I know it's tempting and I know you're feeling overwhelmed by the kind of work that it entails, but an honest suggestion to you is don't do that. Give yourself time, get right into it, write slowly, but write it yourself. And there's another reason why you want to make sure you write it yourself. Because colleges have a way of connecting your previous pieces of writing to this SOP. For example, there could be some other small essays that you've submitted. There could be your TOEFL or ILTS scores that they're looking at. There could be your samples of writing that you submitted in the SAT writing test, for example, or any of those pieces and they could link up the two to find out whether your writing is authentic. 
So authenticity, uniqueness and genuineness are the hallmark here. So write it yourself and believe in yourself. The sixth P is the process. You know, I strongly believe that if you get the process right, the end result is definitely going to be perfect. So the first element of process that I'd like to talk about is begin early. So for instance, if you're applying to college and the dates for application are sometime around October, November this year, and we're sitting right now in the month of June, a good time to start is right away. Give yourself three to four months. You know, writing is this process. It's like this pickle that brews and comes out beautifully at the end. Because sometimes when you write and rewrite, you start to see deeper meanings in what you've written. And eventually, a beautiful piece comes out only with that amount of time and effort that you give it. Read a lot of sample SOPs, for example, if that gives you confidence. Read them off the internet but make sure you never ever lift a single line from there. The third tip I want to give you is follow directions. I remember telling you earlier about trying to be unique. Be unique, but do all of that coloring while you're still inside the lines because anything other than that would be a high risk strategy. And the last element of process is to proofread. Read and reread your statement. Check for grammatical errors, commas, punctuation marks, writing errors, and show it to a number of people. Let people read it and give you feedback. Don't worry so much about negative feedback coming your way. Just show it to friends, to professors, to seniors. Maybe you have a relative who's worked in that area or studied in a similar college. Show it to them, take their feedback on board, and edit, edit, and edit. Don't overuse the word I. Don't use too much of slang like can't and won't. And don't assume that they know the full form of those acronyms. Give it out to them in full form. Talking about the word limit, typically they do specify a word limit, but if they don't, never let your SOP exceed two pages. Another tip I want to give you is in an SOP, unlike the personal statement, keep your personal information to a limited extent because a lot of it like I said is about the program and how you fit into the program so bring in the personal elements only when you want to bring out your personality or you want to bring out your own experiences perhaps you can use a reading app now plug in your computer onto a reading app and let the computer read the statement back to you to me that works great because I hear it and I know hey something's not sounding right and I know what I need to change. Now before we close this class, I'm going to make you listen to three experts on what they think are some of the writing tips for a perfect essay. The personal statement uh, forms the very foundation of uh, your application. So what you write in those 750 words which uh, is the li word limit for the personal statement is what will make or break your application. So uh, for anyone who wants to write a personal statement to an American law school, I think there are six parts uh, that a person should address. First question which a, a person should address is that what is his or her background? Hmm. So where is that person coming from? This is a part of your personal story. So what it could be uh, what motivated you to pursue law and what do you think of uh, the legal career? The second question is that what did you do while you were at law school? So mm -hmm. what were your passions, what were your areas of interest, what were your research interests while you were doing your first degree in law? Okay. The third question which a student must answer is that why is he or she choosing to do an LLM at this stage of their lives? Okay. The fourth question they should answer is that why they have chosen this particular university? And the fifth question is a combination of the third and fourth question. You have to link it. That mm. why are you doing an LLM from this university? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And finally, you have to give them a future plan as well. The admissions committee, they prefer students who have a clear post-study plan. So now in the sixth question, you should answer what will you do with your LLM degree once you are uh, returned to your home country or any other place that you want to work? And how will you uh, link the uh, lessons which you have learned during your LLM to your future goals? Mm. Hmm. For the main personal essay that you write for your college, uh, the important thing to do is to, th to kind of reflect back and sort of think about what you want the college to know about yourself and who you really are. Because the colleges want to see sort of that personality side rather than just see all of the things that you've listed on your resume or things that you may have done before. 
like think about the adjectives that describe them, think about uh, small instances or experiences that they may have had, which will actually show the college who they are. And that being said, I think keeping it simple is really important yeah. because the simpler the essay, I think the more honest it is. The minute you start using thesaurus to, you know, make <laughs> the words look fancy <laughs> and it, it doesn't come across as your own language and right. writing. So yeah. Let it seem like it's straight from it's the heart. It's straight from the heart and yeah. it's not a long essay. Well, one of the things that I think is really important that I stress to students all the time is to remember that writing is a process and that because there's not necessarily a ton of preparation for writing in a lot of Indian schools, uh, it might take a long time to get to an essay, especially sort of your central uh, personal statement or common app essay or a statement of purpose for graduate program. One of the big things I always tell students is nothing in your essay should be information that I could have gotten from your resume. Sure. The essay is a, a chance to give the school a real sense of who you are, right. uh, especially with undergraduate essays. They're really looking for what kind of person you are, how you think about the world, and what you're going to add to this school community. So thanks for watching this masterclass till the end. Please write in with your feedback. Tell me what you liked about it and what you didn't. Tell me what else you want me to work on. And don't forget that subscribe button and the bell icon next to the subscribe button is really really important also like us at facebook at chatchat101 at instagram at chatchat101 and at twitter at chatchat101 and happy watching